So I want to talk about a moment from the debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump that stood out to me because it was deeply, deeply disturbing. And I hope that anyone who's paying attention listens to this and shows this to anyone who's undecided, because this should absolutely shake everyone to their core if they care about democracy. So first and foremost, understand what Trump says when he's asked whether or not he will condemn white supremacy, specifically the Proud Boys. Listen very carefully to his answer here. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right wing. So what are you, what are you, you, look, what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists well, and right like me to condemn? White proud supremacists boys. and right proud, proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left. President Trump, you I'm go first. I'm urging my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully because that's what has to happen. I am urging them to do it. So first, I'm sure you noticed that once again, the president did not condemn white supremacy, which is a very easy thing to do. Second of all, when it comes to the Proud Boys, he did not condemn the Proud Boys unequivocally. In fact, what he said was to stand down and stand by. Stand by for what? To say to stand by, that means be ready. Get ready in the event I need you to mobilize for whatever reason. Now, what that reason may be, we uh, don't necessarily know, but in the event Donald Trump claims that the result of the election is fraudulent if it doesn't go his way, well, that's when he can tell the people who he told tonight to stand by to take action. Now, we got a hint of that tonight at the debate when um, he was asked what he would tell his supporters on the night of the election, and Donald Trump urges his supporters to take action that I think can be described as voter intimidation. Listen carefully to what he says. Will you urge your supporters to stay calm during this extended period, not to engage in any civil unrest, and will you pledge tonight that you will not declare victory until the election has been independently certified? President Trump, you I'm go first. I'm urging my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully because that's what has to happen. I am urging them to do it. As you know, today there was a big problem. In Philadelphia, they went in to watch. They were called poll watchers, a very safe, very nice thing. They were thrown out. They weren't allowed to watch. You know why? Because bad things happen in Philadelphia, bad things. And Are I you am urging... I am urging my people. I hope it's going to be a fair election. If it's a fair You're election, what? I am 100 percent on board. But if I see tens of thousands of ballots being manipulated, I can't go along with that. And I'll tell and what, you what, what from mean, a common sense, does that mean? You're I'll going tell to you what your it means. To take to it the means screen? you have a fraudulent election. You're and sending you out 80 do? million ballots. They're not, they're not equipped. To, these people aren't equipped to handle it. Number one. Number two, okay. they cheat. They cheat. Hey, they found ballots in a waste paper basket three sure. days ago, and they all had the name right. military ballots. They were military. They all had the name Trump on them. Vice President you think Biden, that's good? Vice President Biden, final question for you. Will you urge your supporters to stay calm while the vote is counted? And will you pledge not to declare victory until the election is independently certified? Yes. And here's the deal. We count the ballots, as you pointed out. Some of these ballots in some states can't even be opened until Election Day. And if there's thousands of ballots, it's going to take time to do it. And by the way, our military, they've been voting by ballots for since at the end of the Civil War, in effect. In effect. And that's and that's what's happen, going to happen. Why was it not? Why is it for them somehow not fraudulent? It's the same process. It's honest. No one has established at all that there is fraud related to mail-in ballots, that somehow it's a fraudulent process. It's already been established. It's a, Take a look at Carolyn no, Maloney's I, I, race. I asked and you, now, you had an opportunity look to at respond. Carolyn Mon go ahead. They have no idea what Vice happened. Vice President Biden, go ahead. He has no idea what he's talking about. Here's the deal. The fact is, I will accept it, and he will too. You know why? Because 
once the winner is declared after all the, all the ballots are counted, all the votes are counted, that'll be the end of it. That'll be the end of it. And if it's me, in fact, fine. If it's, if it's not me, I'll support the outcome. So when Donald Trump refuses to condemn white supremacy and he tells the Proud Boys to stand down and stand by and then says, I am urging my supporters to go to the polls and watch because people are going to be cheating. Make no mistake about it. What he's doing is encouraging violence. He is encouraging violence. If he doesn't get his way, he's going to claim that the election is fraudulent and Democrats cheated and his supporters are going to um, cause chaos. The president of the United States is actively encouraging chaos. So, I mean, it's like lose-lose for America, right? Because if Donald Trump loses this election, then he is going to cause complete and utter chaos. He's going to sow division. But if he wins, that's four more years of Donald Trump. So either way, we are looking at a complete shit show come November. Now, I think that Joe Biden did a relatively good job um, at responding to Donald Trump, bringing up the point that, you know, veterans, if they're overseas, they vote by mail. That's the way that they do it. They've always done it this way. It's not something that is, you know, controversial. And the fraud rate is 0.0025%. So the anecdotes that he's bringing up, I'm assuming that they're made up because it's Donald Trump. He lies all the time. Even if they were real, there's no systemic issue with mail-in ballots. He's just saying that they lead to fraud because he knows, according to polls, Democrats are going to be more likely than Republicans to vote by mail. So he wants some excuse in the event he loses this election. It's damage control. But this damage control is so destructive that he wants to put us on the brink of a civil fucking war where he's encouraging his supporters to watch his opponent's supporters at the polls. That is deeply undemocratic. That's voter intimidation. He won't condemn white supremacists. He tells groups that are far-right militias like the Proud Boys to stand by. And he did this on a national debate stage. Like, you can say something like this during a White House press briefing when most people aren't paying attention, but to say this at the first presidential debate when tens of millions of people are tuning in, this is a bad look. This is a very, very bad look, but he doesn't care. He wants people to be afraid. He wants you to think, you better hope I fucking win, because if I don't win, there's going to be hell to pay. I will make sure that I punish America. I will make sure that I encourage my far-right supporters to absolutely raise hell across this country. That's what he wants. He wants you to be so afraid of what would happen if he lost that you hope he wins. But don't fall for it. This is something that everyone should be sounding the alarm about. This is something that the media should be screaming about. Because the president, the incumbent president, is threatening democracy. He is threatening democracy. And Joe Biden said, look, you know, what's going to happen is he's going to be forced to accept the results of the election because once the winner is declared, that's that. You can't do shit about it. Except the problem is that he can refuse to accept the results of the election and um, use the institutional powers that he has as an incumbent president to mess with those results, to meddle. So there was a story in The Atlantic that we covered last week where in the event it's really close in these swing states controlled by Republicans where they are, you know, uh, dominant in their state's legislature, what he can do is ask them to send their own electors to the Electoral College and effectively undermine the will of voters in that state if it's close and they go for Biden. He knows what he's doing. And I hope that Democrats have a plan for this, have a legal team ready because, um, you know, if this happens, they're going to have to be ready to take legal action immediately. And that ultimately may not amount to much if Donald Trump does actually get Amy Coney Barrett appointed to the Supreme Court, who actually uh, worked on Bush v. Gore in 2000, along with Roberts and Kavanaugh. So, I mean, this is, this is chilling. This really should scare everyone. This is one of the stories that shows how Trump really is an anomaly, right? In terms of policy, he really isn't that different from your average Republican. But this is what sets him apart. Like his direct attack 
on democracy to the extent where he's trying to sow chaos in America to benefit himself. Like, this is really, really worrisome, and democracy is at stake, and I don't think I'm exaggerating by saying that. So this absolutely stood out to me. This was the low light of the debate for me, and I hope people are paying attention. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?